love short people. And let me tell you why. Short people keep me in business. This cute young woman named Kristen needs a bridesmaid dress hemmed. She needs seven and three quarters of an inch off her hem. She is the very wonderful, sweet, cute looking girl, but she's just as short as short can be. Now, when I, before I hem a dress, I look to see how they did it. And this isn't going to be an easier hem. I want to see if you can see this. This is all sequins. And on the outset, you're like, oh no, there's nothing wrong with sequins. Your machine will go right over this. It won't be a problem at all. And look at this hem. It was only folded once, not twice, which is wonderful. It's also folded about three eighths of an inch, which is a nice, good size hem. It might be half an inch. Let's see. Let's get my measure. Let's measure this. Now it's three eighths of an inch, which is fine. We can do three eighths of an inch, but it's only folded over once. And the reason that this is going to be nice and it's possible, it's not going to fray because it's sequins on stretchy tool. Yay. It's fantastic. So we're going to, uh, should we sew it first <laughs> or should we cut it first? We're going to sew it first. This is my favorite way to do it. We're going to sew. Oh, I got to think about this. Seven and three quarters inches is really hard to sew before we cut. I think we're going to have to cut it first. The only problem with cutting is it's hard to fold over a narrow hem after you've cut it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to seven and a quarter inches. I'm going to fold over a half an inch because I can fold over a half an inch hem. That's not too hard for me to do. And that way it'll be a total of seven and three quarters inches off the length. So the first thing I need to do is I need to measure and cut off seven and a quarter inches. I'm cutting it off at seven and a half inches. No, seven and a quarter. I cannot forget that. Seven and a quarter. Sometimes if I say it enough, I'll remember. Seven and a quarter. So tool doesn't take a mark. So how do I mark this? Now, I could mark it with a permanent marker because I'll just be cutting and then turning it under and no one will be able to see. I just really hesitate to use a permanent marker because it's, it's permanent. But I don't know if I have another choice. Maybe my ballpoint pen will work better. Nope. Before I take these pins out, I just want to make sure that my measurements are going to be correct. My notes say seven and three quarters. I want to make sure that that's what this measures to. Those of you who like to work in wood, you measure how many times? You measure like three times, cut once. This says seven and three quarters. It actually is closer to eight. That is eight inches. So I've already marked seven and a quarter. I'm just gonna have to go back and mark seven and a half. 
So after looking at the hem that I pinned, I realized that it was eight inches and not seven and three quarters. So I need to remark this so that it reads, so that I will cut to seven and a half and I'll turn under half an inch hem. It'll be eight inches. It'll be good. If you're using a permanent marker, don't keep it in your hand while you're moving the dress around. I didn't mark the dress, but I moved the dress with this in my hand and I'm putting it down and I will not do that again. While I'm here, I'm gonna do the lining. I'm going to just put the other hem that I just removed on top of this lining and use it as a pattern to cut. Do I need to mark? Let me see. Hmm. I am not going to do this because this hem is different and I need to measure it differently and I'm going to think about that later. I'm ready to sew my sequined hem on this dress. Now is there a trick to sewing on top of sequins? Not really. Your, your needle will go through anything. Um, the nice thing about this hem is I'm only folding it up once. Um, I'm sewing a, a half of an inch. Measure if you have to. And I'll measure for a little bit, but I can estimate a half an inch, a half an inch just with my eye. So I'm gonna measure the first little bit and then I'm just gonna sew a half an inch all the way around. Now you'll notice that I'm sewing on the wrong side of the dress. Usually when I do a hem, I want to sew on the front side of the dress because the thread from the spool stitching looks better than the bobbin stitching. But on this case, I have sequins and no one's gonna be looking at my stitching so I can sew on the wrong side and I can watch that hem real close. Okay, so some of the sequins got caught right here on top of my presser foot. So I had to raise my presser foot, get those tucked under, and I'll keep going. That, happens at the, that happened at the seam. So next time I get to the seam, I'm gonna go a little slower and make sure that that doesn't happen again.
caught the last stitch I did. Okay, let's look at our stitching. So that last little thing that my machine did, it didn't make anything on the outside. That was really nice. So I'm looking at my hem, and I think that looks real nice. Now I'm going to hem the lining of the sparkly sequins dress. I've noticed that this is um, two half inch, two half inch uh, hems. What does that mean? They've rolled it twice at half an inch. So I'm gonna cut this off at seven inches, then roll it up twice. Hmm, yeah. Most of the time when I'm doing an inch or two, I'll just fold it up, fold it where I want it, one or two inches, sew it and then turn it. This is seven inches and I can't do that easily on my machine. So I'm gonna cut it off. It's actually eight inches. So I'm gonna cut it off at seven inches and I'm going to have to just take my time and do a double half inch folded hem around the bottom.
The fabric for the lining of this dress is pretty slippery, so I don't think I can fold a half an inch hem on the machine and not go nuts. So I'm going to see if it will press, which is better than going nuts. You always want to test your fabric just a little bit so you don't burn it. So put your, my, my iron is on cotton right now. I'm going to put it on the synthetic. Okay, because I don't want to burn this. Probably won't burn it even on cotton but I don't like to take too many chances. So, looks like my iron's okay. I'm gonna give it a little shot of steam. Yeah. All right. I've noticed that when my iron is on synthetic, it leaks water. That's probably just my iron, it's probably not yours. But I put it on the, the lowest setting for the wool setting and it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, I've gone around once. Let's go around twice. I'm going to double this. And go around again. Now all that's left to do is to put it in my machine, sew that half an inch seam, and we're going to be done. You'll notice I'm sewing on the inside because the outside of this lining doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't look bad. The um, Normally I would sew on the outside to make a stitch look real nice. I don't have to, it's just a lining, so here we go. This dress turned out really nice. Great thing about this sequins dress, I don't need to steam it or press it. It's all ready to go. Now I get to tell the client her dress is done.